Hi. So in the last video, we learned about Lagrange multiplier. So the method we can apply when we uh, try to find op uh, uh, maximum or minimum of the function when uh, 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 but we can only choose so certain values of x and y. Now let's go to some examples. Okay, and look here we've got a function z equals x times y. Now, can we actually find maximum of this function? No. Why? No, because this function is ever increasing. Let me just draw to you, of course this is a three-dimensional function, but we already know that we can look a three-dimensional space from above. So look, what is happening over here? Of course, z axis would be going like this, right? So, how does this function look? Look, the bigger the x and the bigger the y, assuming both are positive, the higher will be the value of x times y. What does it mean is that everywhere over here, uh, when x is positive, you know, it's above zero, and when y is positive, above zero, value of the function is increasing indefinitely. Okay, now, what is happening over here? Look, if y is negative and x is negative, over here, we see that when I multiply negative number by negative number, I'm getting a positive number. So again, here, z is increasing uh, indefinitely, both over here and over here. Now, what happens if we've got a different combination? So if x is negative, but y is positive, then, of course, the product of the two is going to be negative. And the function here is decreasing indefinitely. And look, if x is positive and y is positive, the function here will also be decreasing. Actually, this is the case we already seen uh, when we were talking, when we were uh, discussing graphs of three-dimensional functions and over here we're gonna have a subplot, right? Because here the function uh, uh, the function is going up so we would have a function that looks like this, right? Uh, so we would see from this perspective it would look like a minimum but over here the function is actually falling looks like that, right? So from this perspective, we would see a maximum. Okay, so look, clearly for this function, we, uh, we cannot find either maximum or a minimum. We can find a subtle point, right? But it's not neither maximum nor minimum, right? But what has happened over here? Look, what happened over here is that we've introduced a constraint. And look, this constraint is equal to, uh, is given by x plus y equals to 6, which of course I can draw as y equals uh, negative x plus 6. Okay, again, I can put this on the graph. If x is 0, y is 6, right? And this function is downward sloping. So look, what are we going to do now is that, of course here we should also have 6, right? Because if x is 0, uh, if x is 0, y is 6, but if y is 0, uh, x is also 6. So, what are we going to be looking for now is only a 
associated with the values on this line. Okay, so look, we've just cut it out, uh, cut it out a parts of this, uh, we've just cut it out a part of the function that we've got here, and now let's remember what was ho hoping and what was happening over here. Because look, if we remember correctly, if x and if x and y are positive, then z is increasing. Now, if y uh, is positive, x is negative, z should be decreasing, and the same over here. Okay, so now let's think about if we can actually find minimum over here or over here. Well, this line, of course, just goes uh, goes to infinity, right? Negative infinity. So as z is decreasing, uh, we will be interested. Okay. With only this part of the line, and you see, if we will be going uh, along this line, we can always find lower and lower and lower value of z. And here, the same thing. This line will be going to positive infinity, right? Up. And if we were interested only in this part, we would get higher and higher and low and lower and lower and lower value of z. So over here and over here we will not find anything interesting, right? But interesting things are happening over here. Because look, this line is over here only uh, cutting out part of the upwards going, upward sloping z function, right? So, out of all the possible locations, out of all the possible locations uh, on, this, on, on this part, we are only interested in this small line. And our job using now a uh, Lagrange multiplier is going to be fine which of these points will lie, uh, uh, will lie the height? So, which, which one of them is going to be the highest over here? Okay, because look, again, if I would now took this and put it on the, in the three-dimensional space, Always do it like this. In a sense, 
that here first put the constant and then minus x and minus y. Why is it, does it mean, is it important to us right now? Not at all. But it's going to be important to us in the future because we want to have a very nice consistent interpretation of the Lagrange multiplied the lambda that we're going to use in the introduction to economic analysis. Uh, okay, I can actually see that when I was drawing it, because the drawing is not perfect, this point is not located properly. I can, I can actually tell you, of course, be, well, I know the result because the class, this example is very easy, but the, the location of this point, assuming that I am, uh, I am a robot that draws perfect, uh, perfect graphs, would be over here. If we are looking in front. Okay, why and do everything would be perfectly symmetric? Because remember, here we have sex, here we have sex. But uh, of course, three D graphs are very hard to do. This is why I always recommend you to use the GeoGebra in this time, which is very, very good for drawings. Okay, now let's move back to the case of Lagrange multiplier. Now, we use the first order condition. First order condition tells us to differentiate z. First with respect to lambda, we get just this. 6 minus x minus y equals to z. Then we differentiate the same the Lagrange function with respect to x. So we get y minus 6 lambda equals to z. Then we differentiate z with respect to y. We get that this is, uh, I'm sorry, minus lambda, of course. I don't know why I wrote. Uh, uh, minus lambda equals to zero. Okay, and look, what do we have over here? We've got a system of three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. What do we do in this case? Well, we of course want to put it in matrix notation. And look, out of this one, we can rewrite this condition as minus six. Now, there is one very tempting thing for you to do right now. Because if this equation has minus negative x minus y equals to negative 6, why not do it like this? Normally, it's not a problem. But because of some advantage of using determinants here and matrix algebra, uh, in general, to solving this particular problem, I strongly, rec actually, I advise not to do it because you're going to get the, the wrong outcome. Uh, for a reason, I'm going to explain a little bit later. Okay, so uh, let's go to, to, so let's write now the system of simultaneous equations into matrix notation. So we will have first lambda, then x, then y, right? So let's put coefficients. 0, negative 1, negative 1, and then we've got negative 1, 0, uh, 1, negative 1, 1, 0, which is equal to negative 6, 0, 0. Okay, now, if we want to solve this, because we want to solve it for x and y, we don't need to do it for lambda. What do we need to do first? Well, we need to calculate the determinant. Determinant A. So, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Now, again, this determinant looks suspiciously symmetric. What do I mean by that? Those two elements are the same, 
Those two elements are the same. Those two elements are the same. Right? Huh. So maybe this will be equal to a border Hessian. Well, look, if I differentiate this equation with respect to lambda, I'm getting zero. With respect to x, I'm getting negative one. With respect to y, I'm getting negative one. If I differentiate this with respect to lambda, negative one, x, zero, y, one. If I differentiate this with respect to lambda, I get negative one. With respect to x, one. With respect to y, zero. So this, is a bordered Hessian. So look, now, even before we, we are done with the first order condition, we are already getting the result for, first, uh, uh, for a second order condition, because second order condition is based on the sign of the Hessian. Okay, <coughs> now, as I told you before, we can simplify this uh, uh, all these calculations here easily because I can take out negative 1 on the first row, negative 1 out of the first column, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So what I can do is this. Okay, so now let's calculate this cache. We've got 0, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. 0 and 0. Hessian, border Hessian is equal to 2, and because it is bigger than 0, we know that this is maximum. And what is more, because determinant is different than 0, we know that we can find one unique solution to this system of Simultaneous equations. And look, because. Uh, uh, oh, now, why did I tell you? Why did I tell you not to multiply both sides over here by 1? Look, we would get the same numerical values for x and y that we are going to look for, but the Hessian would have a different sign. Look, in this case scenario, this would be our case, right? We would have minus and minus, uh, 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 minus over here, because here we would have pluses from the beginning, and what would we get? Zero, negative one, plus negative one, we would have negative two, and this would indicate minimum. Look, this is why over here, when we put this into a system of simultaneous equations, we never multiply it by negative, both sides by negative one, even though it might seem more convenient. You can do it later, uh, uh, when you're already using determinants, I actually encourage you to do as much as you can, but not at this particular uh, moment. Okay, so, now we need to calculate Ax. So I take vector of constant terms and I replace the second goal. Remember, we do not calculate lambda. Uh, for now, we will in the future. Uh, we've got 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, uh, oh, sorry, negative 6, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Okay, and look, right away, I can take out of this determinant, out of this column, I can take out negative 1, out of this row, negative 6. So in front I'm having 6, and I need to calculate just very simple determinant. We could do it also with Laplace expansion, but that, that's too easy, right? Because this is going to be 6 times 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Zero. So this is just 6. And we get out of it that x, which is equal to ax over a, is equal to uh, 6 over 2, which is equal to 3.
Three. Okay, then we go to a y, 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 1, 0. Okay, uh, negative 6, 0, 0. Again, I'm taking negative 1 out of this column. Uh, this column and negative 6 out of this column, right? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, I froze up for a second. I thought I made a mistake, but oh yes, I did. Uh, because here you should still have a minus. It didn't change anything, but yes, I, I, I thought that uh, when I was rewriting it here, I forgot the minus should stay here. So I'm taking negative uh, 1 out of this column, negative 6 out of this column. So whatever I'm getting out of it, 6 times 1, 1, and negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so again, this gives us 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. This is 6, so y is equal to a y over a, which is equal to 6 over 2, which is 3. Now, does our solution, does our set of solutions uh, is confirmed by our constraint? Yes, it is. 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, so the solution is okay. And now z is equal to, of course, x with asterisks times y with asterisks, so 3 times 3, which is 9. And the final solution is a triplet x, y, z equal to 3, 3, 9. Okay, so. Uh, we dealt with the first one. Let's go to another example. Okay. In another example, we're going to just complicate our life a little bit. And uh, 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 just a little bit. And later we're going to complicate our life a little bit more. Okay, so now we've got uh, z equals to x times y plus 2x and our constraint is 4x plus 2y uh, equals to 60. Again, look, we start by writing down Lagrange function, so big Z. We repeat this, so x times y plus 2x, then we subtract lambda times uh, uh, we, I'm sorry, we add lambda times 60 minus 4x minus 2y and we move to first order condition. First order condition tells us to differentiate z, capital letter z, with respect to first x, uh, first with respect to lambda, which gives us repetition of the constraint. 60 minus 4x minus 2y equals to 0. Then, we differentiate the Lagrange function with respect to x, which gives us y plus 2 uh, minus 4 lambda equals to 0. Now, we differentiate this uh, z with respect to y, we get that this is x minus 2 lambda equals to 0. And look, again, we get a system of three linear equations with three unknowns. So, the best thing to do here is to put all the constant terms on the right side. So, 2 turns into negative 2. And no, 
not and not here. And write this system into matrix notation. So we've got 0, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2. Uh, we've got there, then we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, lambda x, y is equal to negative 60, negative 2, 0. Okay, now we take and calculate the terminant which we remember that because this is a linear system of simultaneous equations is also equal to border Hessian. Okay, so we calculate this determinant, we get that this is 0, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 1, 0 and again what I can do is to take negative 1 out of the first row, negative 1 out of the first column. Okay, so now we just need to calculate. We've got 0, 8, uh, plus 8, 0, 0, 0. We've got it that this is 16, which is clearly bigger than 0, which means that we've got ourselves a maximum. And because we have a God, our, uh, we've, got our, we've given ourselves a maximum. We, because the determinant is, it means that the determinant is also different than zero, and the one unique solution to the system of simultaneous equations exists. Out of the first row, 
I'm going to take out negative 4. Out of the first column, I'm going to take negative 2. And out of the second row, I'm going to take 2, which gives me 60. Okay, so I have 0, 1, 15, 1, 1, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Okay, so this is 16 times. 0, uh, 0, negative 1, 0, negative 1, uh, plus 15, 0, negative 1, plus 15, 0, uh, uh, zero and zero. Yeah. So this is uh, this is sixteen times fourteen. So this is one. Oh my God! I'm sorry. It's too late for me. It's one hundred forty. Uh, uh, it's one hundred forty plus sixty <laughs> and plus twenty-four. So this is two hundred twenty twenty-four. Okay, and now we can find our solutions because we get the x which is equal to ax over a is equal to 128 over 60 which is 8 and our y which is equal to ay over a uh, is equal to 224 over 16 which is 14. Okay, so does those two uh, solution work? Solutions work? Well, 4 times 8 is 32, plus 2 times y so is 28. In total, it gives us 60. So, what is the highest value y can take? Uh, z can take? So this is uh, 8 times 14, 14. Uh, this is 80 plus 32, uh, this is 112, plus 2 times, uh, 2 times 8 plus 16, so this is 128. So again, our solution x, y, z is a triplet uh, 8, 14, 128. Okay, so now that we've dealt with typical mathematical problems that are not very complicated, let's try to use what we've learned about Lagrange multiplier and optimization under constraint to a uh, 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 to, a, to an economic problem. Okay, so imagine a case like this. Company has a production function given by Q equals 6L plus 10K uh, plus L times K. Now, Q, of course, is level of production Now, uh, L is level of labor. So, how many workers, let's just say for simplicity, how many workers we've got? And uh, K is level of capital. Okay, so now, basically, depending on how much labor, so workers, and capital, the company is going to use in, in its production process, the, the company is going to achieve different level of production. And now, imagine that we have some in, uh, additional information. Now, budget that this company can spend, so budget on capital, 
and labor. Let's just say this is a daily budget of this company. It's $1,200. Okay. Then, of course, we need to remember that the company, if the company wants to produce anything, need to pay for the services of workers. So, need to pay wage. Wage, of course, is the uh, is what workers are making per hour or per day, depending on the context. And let's just say in our case, wage, uh, wage is equal to three dollars. Now, of course, company also, uh, a, a company uh, also needs to pay for the services of capital. How much does it cost? Five dollars. Okay. So uh, they need to pay rent. Rent is a payment for services of capital, so R is equal to five dollars. Now, our job is having these conditions given to us. How many units of labor and capital company should hire to uh, uh, to produce? the maximum level of output possible, assuming that the company can spend, of course, only $1,200 on capital and labor, and those are the prices of labor and, uh, and capital. Okay, so look, again, this function that you see over here is, uh, do not have any uh, it's infinitely increasing with increasing labor and capital. Because look, of course now we know the level of labor and level of capital cannot be negative. This is an economic problem. So, what we need to do is to, we need to impose constraint on this function. Using the information we got over here. And look, how do we do it? Look, the constraint in general for this type of problem should look like that. This is the total budget company can spend. And look, company can spend, let's just say, entire, its entire money only on workers. So only on labor. Then, how much money would company then spend on labor? Well, it would spend W times maximum amount uh, of laborers even higher. But of course, company could spend also its entire money on capital. How much would it, have, it has to spend? Rent times level of capital. But of course, as it turns out, oh, company can spend anything in between. And usually, this is a reasonable thing to do to spend some money on labor, some money on capital. So look, this is going to be our budget, uh, budget constraint, yeah. And so, how it's going to look? 1,200 equals to 3L plus 5. Okay, and look, with this, we can actually now use Lagrange multiplier in order to uh, find at the level of labor and this company uh, and capital that this company should uh, employ in order to get maximum level of production having only $1,200 to spend. Okay, so our Z, first capital Z, so Lagrange function, first we, we write the function we already have. So 6L plus 10K plus L times K. Then we add lambda times 1,200 minus 3L minus 5K and we're ready to start optimization. So we use first order condition and first order condition we differentiate this function first with respect to lambda so we get the repetition of the budget constraint Z 
Then we differentiate it with respect to a uh, labor. We get that this is six plus k uh, minus three lambda. And we differentiate it with respect to capital. We get that this is ten uh, plus l minus five lambda. Okay, again we see that we got a system of three simultaneous equations with three unknowns. The best way of solving it is going to be uh, with matrix algebra. So first thing we do is we change those into uh, we change those uh, 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 those equations by putting constants on the right hand side. And keeping all the minuses the, the way they were. Well, uh, okay, Let, let's say that this is the rule. We, we could do it differently, but I don't want to make things complicated unnecessary. And this 10 also goes over here, so we kind of negative 10. Okay, so now we put this system into matrix notation. We get lambda. L K, which is equal to negative one thousand two hundred minus six and minus ten. Okay, and now we've got zero, negative three, negative five. If negative three and negative five are over here, they're also going to be over here. Then we've got zero, one, one, zero. Okay, and like before, we start by calculating. Determinant A, which happens to be equal to the Hessian. We got that this is 0, 15, 0, 15, 15, 0, 0, 0, 0. This is 30, this is bigger than 0, so we, should, we can be sure that this is going to be a maximum. And the solutions can be found. Okay, let me erase. Oh, actually, we don't need any, any of this anymore. Um, maybe let's leave this part with our budget constraint to make sure that it's the solution we're going to get actually works. And uh, so, what are we going to do? So, we are looking for AL. Okay, so we've got 0, negative 3, negative 5, negative 1200. Uh, negative 6, negative 10, negative 5, uh, 1, 0. And, okay, so what can we do now? Look, what I'm going to do now is to take negative 5 out of the first row and negative 5 out of the third row. So I'm going to get 25 up front and over here, this oh, uh, 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 1200 uh, divided by 5, this is 240 and so we got 1, okay. yeah. then we've got here negative 3, negative 6, 1, and here we've got 1, 2, 0. And look, there is one more thing we can do, uh, not to write too much, I can take 2 out of this, uh, out of this column, so we're going to have 50 up front, here will be 120, here is going to be negative 3, here is going to be 1. Okay, can we do anything else? I don't think so. Okay, let me just rewrite this constraint. Oh, so we got that this is 50 times 0, 120, 0, 120, then uh, minus 3, then plus 3, and 0, and 0. So this is 50 
times 120, which is equal to 6,000. See, two zeros, yeah. Okay, then we've got A, K, equal to uh, 0, negative 3, negative 5, then we've got negative 3, 0, 1, then I have uh, negative 1,200, negative 6, and negative 10. Okay, so what can I do right now? Okay, not, not that much, but okay. Out of this row, I can take negative 3, and out of this row, I can take negative 3. So I'm going to have 9 in front. So we've got 0, 1, uh, 400, and I have uh, 1, 0, 2, negative 5, 1, negative 10. So look, I also can take out of the last column, 2, so here I will have 18, 18, here it's going to be 200, 1, and negative 5, okay, so we've got that this is 18 times 0, minus 5, plus 200, Zero, so plus 100, zero, zero, plus five. Okay, so this is 200, so this is 3,600. Okay, so we get that L, which is equal to AL over A, is 6,000 divided by 30, which gives us 200. And K, which is AK over A, is equal to 3600 over 30, which is equal to 120. Yeah. So, now we see that the level of production under these circumstances is going to be maximized if the company is going to choose to hire one, uh, 200 workers and 120 units of capital. So, what is the maximum level of production this company uh, can, uh, can achieve? Well, that's easy. Of course, now we just need to calculate. 6 times L, uh, this is 1,200 plus 10K, uh, so plus 1,200. And plus L times K, which is 24, 0, 0, 0. Am I right? Yeah, so this gives us 0, 0, 4, 6, 2. So this is the, the level of production if we hire 200 units of labor and 100 units of Okay, so this is it about Lagrange multiplier uh, and in the next video we're going to start new part of, uh, of calculus, integral calculus. See you in the next video.